then what happens is because the calcium is released into the cells, um, it, it binds to these proteins on actin. So this is the protein actin and myosin. And these are inside the muscle cell. So what happens is calcium, now that it's released into the cell, binds on to these proteins that embedded in, in actin. So two calcium ions will bind to each one of these proteins. There are two proteins that are embedded in actin. There's troponin and then there's tropomyosin. Tropomyosin is this long rod-like um, protein that's inside of the actin. And what it does is when calcium ions aren't um, embedded, the shape of the troponin causes the tropomyosin to block the binding sites on the actin. So these binding sites, they're supposed to bind to myosin, or they bind with myosin, and they're not active, like they're not exposed. So myosin can't bind with actin. So what happens when the action potential comes down the key tubule, it causes the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release calcium into the cells. So when calcium is released into the cells, these calcium ions bind to troponin. Troponin then changes its shape and causes the tropomyosin to free the binding sites. So then the binding sites would be faced, instead of being faced up there, they would be faced down here, and then myosin would then attach onto the binding site and pull where the actin towards the M line. So the myosin is going to attach, pull, attach, pull, and then that's a muscle contraction. Cool. That's it. So this is this is what your body does every time you, you move, move your, your muscle. muscles. Yeah, it's the skeletal muscle, voluntary muscle. So if I think in my head, oh, I want to move my hand, I'm sending a signal down my soma uh, somatic motor neuron, and my motor neuron sends a signal to the axonal bulb. The axonal bulb opens up its calcium channels and releases the acetylcholine, and then the receptor is attached to the acetylcholine, and then it causes the sodium-potassium channels to open, and then sodium efflux and potassium, or, or sodium influx, potassium efflux occurs. More sodium goes in, causing a, a net positive charge, and then a threshold occurs. When the threshold occurs, an action potential occurs in this local area, which is called end plate potential. And then it propagates throughout the, the, sarco, the sarcoplasm, and it goes along the membrane, opening sodium channels, causing an action potential, and then it goes down these T-tubules. When it goes down these T-tubules, these proteins that are embedded in the triad um, between this T-tubule and the terminal cisternae of each side change their shape. And when they change their shape, it causes, it signals the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release calcium into the cell. And when calcium is released into the cell, it binds to troponin, and troponin changes its shape and then it moves the tropomyosin to release the binding sites of the actin, and myosin binds to it, and the muscle contracts. Very cool. So how long have you been studying this? Just one day. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Ray.